Zooming in on your footage is one of those effects that you just have to know. Sometimes it's just so good to create some fake camera movement to make your video look a lot better. And that is why in today's video, I'm going to show you how to do that within 10 seconds in Premiere Pro. But because it's only 10 seconds, I'm also going to show you some other very cool tricks. I'm going to show you how to do the punch in effect that you see all over YouTube. And I'm going to show you how to do a very easy zoom in transition. Obviously, the first step is to import your video and then put that on the timeline. Now go to the effects control tab and there is not really a zoom function or a zoom effect in Premiere Pro, but there is the skill function. So that is what we're looking for. By changing the value of the skill to something above 100, it will look zoomed in. If you want to create some motion, you have to create keyframes. And in order to create keyframes, you have to click on the little clock right here. But first, go to the part of the clip where you want the zoom to start. Now we have to create keyframes, so click on the clock next to Skill and Position and create your first keyframes. If you want, you can click on this arrow right here that will give you a slider. Maybe you find that easier to use than changing the value right here. Just do whatever works for you. By changing the value or moving the slider, you will simultaneously create a keyframe. If you move the keyframes further apart from each other, it will go slower. And if you move it closer to each other, it will go a lot faster. But now, as you can see, it is probably not scaled up or zoomed in to the point where you want it to be zoomed in. So that is why we created a keyframe for the position. So click on position or click on motion and then click on the screen and you can just reposition it or you can change the values of the position. Now, if you decided to use the slider, you will already see this little speed graph right here. And if you click on it, you see these little handles. And if you click on one of those handles and you just drag them either way, you will see that the curve will change. And when the curve changes, it means that the speed changes. So you can adjust the speed however you want. Now, I've had some questions from people asking me if I use multiple cameras because I use this punch in effect. But no, it is just one camera and it's super easy to do in Premiere Pro. All we have to do is the same steps that we just did, but we don't have to create any keyframes. Instead, we just cut up our clip where we want the punch in effect and we zoom in on that clip. I love using this effect, but there is definitely a time and place for it. I mainly use it when I want to emphasize a certain point, but it's also a great way of hiding any jump cuts. Lastly, I'm going to show you how to make a very easy zoom in transition. All you need is two clips and two adjustment layers and a few effects, but we'll get into that. Step one is to put the clips next to each other. Then you want to create an adjustment layer and you can create an adjustment layer by clicking right here on new item and adjustment layer or right clicking on the project manager and click on new item and adjustment layer. You want to put this adjustment layer on top of where the two clips meet. This adjustment layer will be your transition. So make it as long or as short as you want. We're going to put this adjustment layer on the third video track because we're going to add another adjustment layer, which we want in between that adjustment layer and the clips. Because there is no effects yet on that adjustment layer, we can just duplicate it by pressing Alt on your keyboard and then just dragging it down. Now we want to make sure that it starts where the second clip starts, but it ends where the top adjustment layer ends. Let's first add the effects to the bottom adjustment layer because this is going to be the hard work. After this, it's just a few more things and you're done. So let's start with the hardest part. Go to the effects tab and type in replicate. Drag that to the bottom adjustment layer and here in effects control, change the count to three. As you can see, now there's nine replicas in the screen. Next, we're going back to the effects and we're going to type in mirror. And this effect we want to add four times. Click on mirror, copy that effect by pressing Ctrl C on your keyboard, and then paste it three more times by pressing Ctrl V on your keyboard. Now you may be wondering, why do we need this effect four times? Well, as you can see on your screen, we have nine replicas and the only one that we are interested in is the one in the middle. So we have to mirror everything four times because we have to mirror it from the top, the bottom, the left and the right. So what you want to achieve is that it looks like that middle frame is mirrored in all the other frames. 
This can be a little bit complicated, but to keep it very simple, what I do is I do it in steps of 90. So the first effect will be zero, then the second effect will be 90, then 180 and 270. And if you do it this way, there is basically no math involved and all you have to do is reposition the effect so that it all looks seamless. We're done with the bottom adjustment layer. Now we have to work on the top adjustment layer. And like I said, the hard work, it's done. <laughs> We're good. Now what we have to do is we have to go back to effects. We have to type in transform and drag that to the top adjustment layer. Go back to the effects control tab and right here where it says scale, we have to create keyframes for 100 and 300. Where you will have to create your keyframes really depends on how fast or how slow you want the transition to be. Usually what I do and what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to the middle, so to the intersection of the two clips where the two clips meet, and I'm going back five frames. And make sure that if you decide to go back five frames, that when you go back to the middle or the intersection or where the two clips meet, you go forward five frames as well. You want both sides to be equal. The reason why we use 300 is because that is how we go from the three frames to one frame again. This is what we have so far, but I feel like we're missing something. We need some motion blur. So go down here and untick the box that says use composition's shutter angle. Below that, you will see shutter angle, and this is where we're going to change the value. You can change the value to 180 or 360. It really depends on how much motion blur you want. As I promised, it is simple and it is way easier than it looks when you see it in the video. And if you think that you're ready to learn something else really cool, make sure to click on this video and of course hit subscribe and the notification bell so we can see each other in another video. You know that I won't stop staring at you until you click on the video, right?